a SUMA 4 employee, and it's just been announced that you've been acquired by Cisco, what is your immediate concern? What's the first thing that you worry about? Why do we want to do that? Why don't we really get good at something rather than try and be this full range? Because I see the customers are getting more and more sophisticated. They need a solution rather than piecemeal you know, products. Because they can't create the wheel. Because they seem like they've got so many processes to make them efficient. And you know, they've, got, they've got processes for estab establishing new technology, processes for acquisition. They're highly efficient. They've got all these quality statistics. I wonder if they're so confined that they can't, they can't actually have any creativity. Uh, earlier, the telecom market was, it was a kind of closed system, wherein you had typically, most of the companies had proprietary technologies, ah, okay. for example, switches. Right. And once you have these proprietary technologies in place, you could just kind of uh, play on, uh, I mean, uh, you could actually play, play in the market depending on your own uh, whims and fancies. But now the industry is slowly evolving to an open, uh, open system. It will be very easy for any player to step in the market as long as you have human capital, for example. So you can actually use these standards, you can build your products. It could be a very niche product, it could be a very specific product. But you can actually, so it's no longer the, the domain of just the big players like Cisco. What, who is predicting the next wave? I think they're really trying to focus on their core competencies. They're good at distributing the complete solution to their clients. And all their strategy is outsourcing. You outsource manufacturing because that's not what you're good ah, at. Okay. And you will outsource research, part of it, not that they're not good at it, but because they can't cover everything. And by doing that, offer like win-win deals because uh, they will offer all their distribution channels that the small company couldn't have used otherwise. So it's growth for the small company and growth for Cisco at the same time. So you're saying, we probably can't, that's probably an accurate statement, but it's more important to think we're going to save time, it's more efficient because we're focusing on what we're good at, and we're probably saving money. Why we're doing all these acquisitions, when we acquire a company, and these, these are technology companies, so a lot of the employees didn't get super salaries as these small, you know, pre-development kind of thing, but they did get options. But they got options in uh, that if you left that company uh, before it was acquired by Cisco, you probably had to turn in your options at book value or some, some low number like that. So as long as the market's going up, beautiful, happy. Uh, that uh, that you could could ask each way, John. Uh, it's like a mandatory one. So that's what they break it down to. And I think it's quite good to make sure that everyone has consistent information systems and process in place when you merge with a company, because then you're all on the same page rather than being on different pages. Anything else? Uh, what Cisco is trying to do is the very day we start owning your company, we'll put your products on our books. And for Cisco, reputation is extremely important, so they want to make sure that quality is here from day one. Boy, so that you arrive and can look up at the catalog, and there is your product. But what's the benefit, Susan? I think for Cisco Wise, right, they would like to put the product onto their catalog as soon as the day they acquire the company. Do you think this helps on the integration process? You show up day one, and sometimes two companies merge. And you're sitting, when are things going to change? What's happening? Nothing seems to change too much. But this is yeah. like instantaneous, and then you think, wow, okay, you know, we actually, this has actually gone through. It's a realization shock, I think. We've got some Japanese. There is also one key point here is the approach that a company like Cisco has, and an approach like, say, a small company like Sumo 4 has. Now, a typical small company like Sumo 4. Uh, the main uh, key driving point for them is, uh, for example, uh, how faster you can hit the market with your product. Yeah. So their concern probably at that point of time is not so much about the quality or the defect rate. It is about yeah. that when you ship the same product to a Cisco's product line, Cisco perhaps cannot compromise with the quality or the defect. They would have some internal standards. It could be Six Sigma, it could be whatever. Every time an order is placed, 
automatically you will you can monitor volume you can monitor inventory of materials but also parts so eventually it will largely increase efficiency and you know we're, we we really are focused on controlling that future production that whole old system I also want to get into what's flexible, but identify redundancies as far as the different suppliers are concerned. Redundancies, yeah. yeah. So you could actually eliminate one or more of these suppliers when you once you once you find that you have you have the same set of suppliers for both of these companies. The sales and distribution system to really grow big. I yeah. mean, in the past when the company is small, maybe the reliability is not that crucial. But as the company ramps up, the, all these reliability of supply all these becomes even more crucial. Right. A custom. Like it, like it, a customer for it, and you like it. Yes. So, you know, it's like not so much of a control whatsoever that we're talking about because it's not going to happen once every three months, one, once every one year. So it's like we can tie them down to a contract, say that okay, you ship to this department and you work there for five years. So you have this major ship, you have five uh, on one On one hand, you also uh, offer some, some form of uh, refreshment to what they're doing. And this is uh, actually a uh, and now pass by to retain the employees because there are so many things they can do within Cisco. I'm wondering if there's some similarity or, or some contrast, really, between this and uh, Cooper Industry, mm -hmm. where you're pretty low, more mundane manufacturing processes, where you might want to have a more uh, 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 tight control and all. Where we're dealing, we're not dealing with five-year-olds here. We're dealing with uh, with, with mature, scientifically oriented, and you expect responsible behavior. Give them a little flexibility, but, but respect. Now, there is a balance between Susan's, you know, trying to fence them in a little bit and, and Xavier's a little more free range. So it's just a matter of, uh, of, of balancing there. Offer, Philip? They also have other tension points. Ah, Secure's quite got good. money. If all else fails, we'll offer money. So uh, we have a retention bonus uh, that if they stay through that time period, they get, uh, they get the money.